Good morning and welcome to a special meeting of Commissioner's Court. Today is Monday, October 31st. Happy Halloween to everybody. And it is 9 a.m. All members of the court are present and the meeting is called to order. If everyone will please rise for the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I want to thank you for this day and thank you for the many men and women who work hard every day to make Hardin County a great place to live. Thank you for everyone here today to make decisions for the county and uh, we look forward to your guidance and leadership to make sure that we make the right decisions for all of the employees and the citizens of the county. Thank you for the men and women who fight overseas and, and at home to keep us safe every day. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And item number three, we have Carmen Apple, the district coordinator with the Texas Department of Public Safety, Texas Division of Emergency Management, to give us a presentation today on disaster recovery information. Good morning, Ms. Good Apple. Morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much, Ted and Commissioner. I'm going to continue quickly. I'll make this uh, brief so that you can continue the business. There's a couple of things that I wanted to discuss with you and uh, remind you of what you're getting is a uh, brief on the uh, elected officials' responsibilities and how to request assistance during an emergency or, or times of disaster. Uh, I work, as you know, for uh, the Texas Division of Emergency Management. I work very closely with Teresa, and uh, over the past year, uh, we've worked, I think, even closer than we have before. We've uh, talked to each other multiple times a week. Uh, and as you know, the, the state of Texas over the past year has had a number of disasters. Uh, Hardin County has not been immune to those. We've had two presidential declarations in the last 12 months here in Hardin County. So we just want to reinforce how to uh, get state aid. Uh, there's been going to be a little bit of a change for Hardin County with that. And uh, also a little bit of change on your threshold. FEMA is raising the thresholds uh, beginning October 1st of this year. Uh, so first of all, let me say in the past, uh, to get a request with the state of Texas, you, Teresa, would go on to Web EOC, uh, which is a, for lack of a, a better term, a, a database, an informational and uh, requesting database. And that database has been on a server that's been owned by another jurisdiction. So the uh, system itself was built for another jurisdiction. Uh, they've been allowing Hardin County to use it at no cost. However, that has come into a little bit of problems because naturally since they own it, uh, when they've made changes or updates, they tweak it to meet their needs, not necessarily the needs of Hardin County. So Teresa and I have been in discussion and we've been working very closely to try and get Hardin County moved over to the state server called the Lone Star server and have those boards and those request mechanisms built specifically for your needs. Uh, we're about 97% complete. Uh, this will come at no cost to the county. This is a service that the state is going to provide to try and better make your request process easier and have it fit your needs, not the needs of another jurisdiction. Um, we will be meeting Wednesday afternoon with the uh, TDEM's critical information systems team that is doing the build out for all of Hardin County and, and the cities that Teresa has identified and that have uh, acknowledged that they would like to participate in this. Uh, we're going to meet with them Wednesday afternoon to get some finalization on how they want it built specifically for you and your needs. And hopefully, uh, I know by the end of the year, first of next year, we'll have it completely built out and we will transition Hardin County over from the other jurisdiction server to the state server. I think this will be a, a better mechanism for you to request the state of Texas uh, assets. Uh, I think it be, will be built specifically for you and your needs. And as your needs change, then we will accommodate those needs and, and build it specifically to what you need to do with it. Again, this is at no cost to Hardin County or any of the cities within Hardin County. And we've been working on this together for about a year, so I'm, I'm pleased to announce that we're in the final stages of it, and this should make uh, things a little bit easier for Teresa and whoever will be working those logistical requests during an emergency. We'll also note that October 1st of this year, FEMA came out with the new Consumer Price Index for disasters, 
And if you look on page nine of the packet that I gave you, uh, the consumer price indec indicator is multiplied by the 2010 census for Hardin County. And you'll see Hardin County's 2010 census was 54,635, which at that time made our threshold $195,047. The uh, per capita for countywide went from $3.57 per person to $3.61 per person. So that raised our threshold to $197,232. So our threshold's going up almost $3,000, which may not seem like a lot, but it could be a lot if we're on that bubble of whether or not we meet our threshold. Uh, Commissioner, did you have a, a question, sir? What was it again, 197? Uh, 197, 232, 0.35 to be specific. Uh, they have not adjusted the uh, CPI for any uh, census newer than 2010. It's still maintained at the 2010 census. Um, I don't know if they're going to be looking into that or not, but uh, from October 1st on, and this will be our new threshold for disaster declarations, 197,232. Uh, with that being said, anytime you need something, uh, on the front of the packet you have my information. Uh, I think we've worked really well in the past to get you the resources that you need. Uh, again, Teresa and I have worked very well the past four years that uh, I've been assigned here. And uh, we've talked multiple times throughout the week. And I hope for anything else that might come up in the future, we're going to continue to, to have this good working relationship and make sure that the citizens of Hardin County get service and get the resources that you need uh, to sustain your operations and bring back some type of more normalcy after a disaster. So with that, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. If not, I just wanted to uh, make you aware of those two changes. But, uh, we are working to move you over to the state server so that it'll be built specifically for you and your needs at no cost to you. And our threshold did go up just a little bit. Coleman, I had uh, one question. Yes, sir. If you don't mind. Uh, of course, working with the state and then being assigned to the uh, EOC in the last uh, disaster, I'm, <coughs> I'm pretty well aware of how the system works. And, and I mean, it, it does, to me, it works great. But I had one area of concern, and I wanted to ask you this question. There were supposed to be some reps getting with you to talk to you about this. In the event that uh, it looks like that we're going to have a disaster, mm -hmm. the state resources uh, have a big area to cover. In other words, if we don't know exactly <coughs> where the, uh, just going with a hurricane, for mm -hmm. example, if we don't know where landfall is going to be, then they're going to have a staging area, and then they start moving their resources. One area <coughs> of concern that I had is if we have a potential of one and the judge calls for an evacuation and we need assistance uh, on transportation, ambulances or whatever, uh, prior to landfall, I don't think the state would be able to move enough equipment up here to help us out because we still have potential Corpus Christi or wherever. Is that correct in assuming that? Typically, we when we <coughs> activate those state bus contracts, um, <coughs> We have to activate those right at about 120 hours out, which is why we have the 120 hour planning. Just to throw the switch on that at the state level costs a little over $3 million um, from the state. Uh, the first thing that happens once those buses are activated is they have to go to San Antonio to what we call Alamo Command because those buses do have to be inspected to meet um, <coughs> Department of Transportation uh, permitting rules, regulations, and guidelines to make sure that the buses we're putting on the roads are safe uh, for the evacuees to travel in. Um, hopefully that gives us a little bit of time so maybe that cone of error starts to narrow a little bit. Uh, but I know I do have on my desk requests for just over 230 buses and about 300 ambulances. Uh, both Covered how many counties would you all say? All three counties. Three. <coughs> Now, that's what I'm going to be requesting. Will that be what I get? I don't know, because those decisions on what they're actually going to give me uh, are going to be based in Austin. Uh, so just, just in that area uh, mm -hmm. that we spoke about as far as buses, ambulances, or whatever, do you see it uh, being an advantage to us to go out for private contracts 
for just that prior to uh, the disaster coming in, or do you see us uh, being safe and relying on the state to provide that? Well, it depends on what you would be contracting for. Would you be contracting for buses or ambulances? If you're looking at ambulances, then um, are these people that are uh, home-based individuals? Because we know that uh, medical individuals that are in a nursing home type of facility, those facilities by law, <coughs> if they're regulated by Department of State Health Services, they have to have a plan and they have to have contracts to move those individuals out of harm's way. I think in that area, as far as the, uh, Teresa can correct me if I'm wrong, as far as the nursing homes, most of them are going to uh, shelter in place. Is that their plan? They're not supposed to. Okay. I, I know yeah, two in Sylvia that I've talked to says that's their plan for the future. Now, whether or not they can or they're going to do that, I don't know, but that would cut <coughs> down on the number that we would actually need there. We don't advise. About our 211 people? They either go to the embarkation hub mm -hmm. or we request ambulances to get the, the medically, the, the ones that are, have a lot of medical needs. I mean, we've gotten them out of the area okay. I mean, we, just, we haven't had any. In the past, did we have a contract with anybody or we just, no. where did we get the We rely on the state. Okay. That's all and I it, have. It, it doesn't. There's no detriment in terms of having a contract if there's no upfront expense. Mm -hmm. um, the only problem would be if you activated a contract and then you had to pay for that expense and for some reason uh, the storm didn't cause as much damage or like those storms typically do, they keep clicking and clicking. <clears throat> if we did not meet our threshold or qualify for a presidential declaration, then there would be no reimbursement on that potential expense. Uh, like in Gustav, we evacuated and it didn't hit here. So exactly. We would have eaten that cost. <clears throat> and with Umberto, um, if you remember, Umberto was a tropical storm, made landfall as a Cat 1. It didn't do enough damage. Um, we didn't meet thresholds uh, in Umberto to qualify for a presidential declaration. So those jurisdictions did not have uh, an avenue of reimbursement. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to fight my hardest to get all the resources that I can and that we've identified as being what's needed for this three county area. Um, what Austin sends me is what we're going to have to deal with and the captain and I will try to equitably divide those resources if we don't get the number that we're requesting. Uh, we'll try to see, you know, which are our most um, fragile residents that need to be evacuated and need evacuation assistance, which of those residents are, are in uh, harm's way the most, and try and move them out. And, and it, a lot of it's going to depend on what type of storm it is. We know with the two different hurricanes, we had two different threats. Uh, with Rita, it was mostly a wind threat. With Ike, it was mostly a surge threat. So there's a lot of different factors that will come into play into how whatever resources we get will be divided equitably. But you can, you can guarantee I will be fighting for all of the resources that I have identified uh, and we'll be again asking for uh, the uh, airlift to come in to help with our medically fragile as well. And you have the next state evacuation that you're talking about in June? Yes, next June we are uh, Region 2, which is uh, from Lufkin on down to Houston, we will be doing a statewide full-scale evacuation exercise. Uh, we will be bringing in uh, transports to the Jack Brooks Regional Airport. We're going to ask for volunteers. We're going to bring in buses. We're going to bring in ambulances. And we are going to play it just like we would in, in the real world. Uh, we're going to stand up the DDC. I believe Teresa is going to stand up the EOC. All the jurisdictions in Jefferson County and some in Orange County will be playing. Uh, so we're going to do a full-scale evacuation exercise. We'll move uh, individuals out. Some will go to shelters in our sheltering jurisdictions to spend the night in a shelter. And then the next day, we'll reverse the process, bring them back, and practice how we repatriate our evacuated citizens. This is one time we could all evacuate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could Definitely could. Right. Definitely I was thinking I'd volunteer to take the plane ride. <laughs> Where are we going? 
That's San Antonio. I can spin them up. Yeah. It'll be in a shelter. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but we are going to play that uh, June, the first part of June. Um, and uh, the, the captain and I have uh, had some discussions, and we do want to play it like we would in a real-world evacuation. So we're going to uh, stand at Ford Park. We will have those assets, the buses and the ambulances, staged there. And as the requests come in, we're going to deploy them uh, from Ford Park down to the jurisdictions that need them. So uh, we'll have that practice, and hopefully that's all it'll be for several years is practice. Gonna be married then too, so you're gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> now we got it on record. <laughs> but uh, please know for any questions, anything that you need, you know that's uh, my number right there on on the front page is is the number that you can get me on 24/7. Uh, I even take it with me on vacation. Uh, so if uh, if you don't have it, please save it. Uh, please feel free to call me. Um, our Thank you very much for the working relationship that we have. It's been wonderful, especially with Teresa. She's, she's been very helpful in trying to get this move over to the state server so that we can build it out specifically for you and your needs. And all the uh, jurisdictions in Hardin County will have that same as well. So I really appreciate all her help in, in getting this done. So That is a personal one. Yes, sir. You can keep that one, too. That one don't, may not be as uh, answered as frequently yeah. as the other one is. <laughs> I've never have seen this one, so I'll put it in. But that, that is the one that's on 24-7. Uh, and if you call Carmen, she answers. Oh, I know. Yeah. Carmen, we want to thank you for all your help. You've been there for us this past year, and uh, we know you'll be there for us in the future. We hope we don't need you, but uh, we know if we do, you'll be there, and we appreciate that. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much, and please feel free to call me with any <coughs> questions or concerns that you might have. All right, thank you. All right, item number three, Misty Sims, purchasing agent. Adoption of resolution number 35-16, authorizing and approving execution of a lease purchase agreement with Bank Corp South Equipment Finance for the networking, cabling, and VOIP phone system projects as approved in Commissioner's Court on October 24th, 2016. So moved. <coughs> second. I have a motion by Commissioner Cooper and a second by Commissioner Pelt. I'd like to take just a moment to, for just a little bit of discussion on this that we did not do in the meeting last Monday. If everybody will look, there's an attachment to your uh, resolution. And this shows how much we have budgeted for telephone and internet uh, for this fiscal year. And then the uh, cost that we're looking to uh, outlay just for the cabling and, and uh, VOIP project. It will come in under budget. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud that we were able to work and get that done. And I wanna thank the committee for working uh, to get make sure that that happened that way. Uh, they worked with the vendor to negotiate their price down. It is still quite a bit, and that's why I wanted to, to take a little bit of time and talk about exactly what the cost is. And Misty, do you have that handy? Is it? Is it? It's, it's spelled out in the resolution, isn't it? The total cost. Yes. Yes. Okay. Two two thirty six four forty. Is that right? Yes. Sir. And that's over a five year period. And then after that five year period is over, we we would drop down to uh, only paying the uh, annual amount to Time Warner, which is eighteen thousand. Uh, plus whatever our cable TV cost is. As you can see right now, that's 671 a month, but Misty's working to get that lowered as well and feels like she can get that cut in half, if not if not more than that. So uh, just wanted to kind of make sure that we were open with everyone about that. It, it is a large project. <coughs> that's 225 handsets throughout the courthouse and all nine satellite offices, plus the equipment and the labor to get it installed, and then plus all of the switching equipment and cabling and labor to uh, for the networking and, and uh, cabling project as well. And if there's no more discussion, I'll take a vote. Looks like we have a really good interest rate. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, that's another thing. Misty had uh, uh, got a, a better interest rate than the one that we had gotten through TTI, uh, which was an NEC finance note at 7%, and I think she got a 2.39% yeah. through Bank Corp South. Very good. So that saved us okay. quite a bit as well. All right, once again, we have a motion by Commissioner Cooper and a second by Commissioner Pelt. If there's no more discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. 
Item number five, Misty Sims, correction regarding results and awarding of bids for motor fuel, oil, and lubricants for all road and bridge precincts previously adopted in commissioner's court on October 24th, 2016. Um, I apologize, I had a mistake on the bid results <coughs> for automatic transmission fluid. Um, it should have been the lowest bidder was CNI Oil Company on both drum and gallon. It was $422.01 for drum and $70.60. Accept the correction. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Pelt and a second by Commissioner Kirkendall. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item number six, just, uh, I'm sorry, Misty Sims, authorization for county judge to sign copy or lease agreement with Xerox Corporation for the 356 district judge courtroom. So moved. <coughs> second. I have a motion by Commissioner Cooper and a second by Commissioner Pelt. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item number seven, discussion, discussion concerning road and bridge software program. Uh, commissioners, I've, I've spoken with some of you in person and just been doing some research. Eddie and Suzanne uh, Earhart had uh, designed and implemented a precinct tracker and of course their local company. And uh, it was their, their brainchild and uh, we know that both of them have uh, de are deceased, and uh, the company has been passed on to their son. There's a uh, question of whether or not he's going to be able to keep up with the updates. In fact, it has not been updated in several years, and uh, through some research that uh, I've done, it's on the uh, verge of being extinct, really, as far as software goes. And so. Uh, I know that we're depending on a former employee who is contracting with the company now whenever we do have issues. And so we're at basically, uh, we're underneath uh, that stress and pressure of we may not have a service person available should our system crash. And so uh, I've reached out to uh, eLogic, uh, who's also a local company. They said it would take six to nine months to develop a program that will uh, resemble what we have. Uh, it will be updated and better uh, with Precinct Tracker. We do not own the uh, software. We lease it from Precinct Tracker. With eLogic, we would own it and uh, have, uh, we would have um, availability of service at a Beaumont should we need it. Uh, and they will have routine uh, updates. One of the things we're looking at doing is being able to tie, like if we go in and put in a road or an address of where we've done work, that that can also be tied to uh, Google Earth. So you can actually pull up the location where the work was done. That's the type of software we're looking at. Uh, the price uh, has been uh, has been thrown out there, and I'm, try, I'm gonna try to negotiate with that. I spoke very briefly with the judge of maybe taking some out of uh, commissioner's court funds in order to pay for half of it and then maybe <coughs> about 3,500 from each commissioner to make up the difference. And uh, so the judge said that, uh, that we could discuss that and be open to taking a portion of that money from commissioner's court and, uh, and do that. So I would just ask if y'all would look at that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to call us. Uh, Wally Wickenhunt. Uh, who is uh, who I've been speaking with? Feel free to call and talk directly with him, and then uh, with with y'all's permission, maybe uh, at the end of November, put it on commissioner's court for a discussion and approval. If y'all want to go that route, but it would, I think it's about down to about probably about thirty five hundred per precinct to replace it if we take half of the money from commissioner's courts. Okay, so that leaves what's the total cost of the estimated cost for the. 40,000, but I'm going to see if we can get it down. Okay, so that's that's under what we're required to bid, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, which would be fine with me. I mean, <coughs> my main thing is I started feeling kind of desperate, so I kind of re I reached out to Wally to say, hey, is this something y'all could do? <coughs> we're really at the mercy of does a guy have a drive and passion to correct this, the software and system and I've not been I don't feel confident 
I think that uh, it's a great idea, and I appreciate you looking into that. What I would suggest, and this is just a suggestion to the judge, is uh, form a committee consisting of a couple of secretaries and let Commissioner uh, Kirkendall uh, chair it and let them look into this. Uh, because like Commissioner Kirkendall said, I think that this is something that really needs to be looked into. Uh, and, and, and it's not so much the fact that we couldn't go to the uh, system, the software system that the other courthouse personnel are in because we're kind of unique on, on uh, keeping up on man hours and all that kind of stuff. And that software doesn't have the capability. Right. So, yeah, that's uh, just for accounting that we have here. Right. And that is something that we need to, we need to discuss at some point in the future. We do need some good software that, all, that will connect all of the departments in the courthouse that uh, judi do judicial work, but that's something we'll bring up and if, uh, later down the road. If you decide that that's what you want to do as far as committee, I would like my secretary to be on that yeah, committee. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. In fact, I mean, I would be, if, if it's okay, all the secretaries absolutely. Yeah. be on it, and that way everybody has some input. Because one of the things that we'll be able to do is network. Now, I think Wally said he could he could get with the auditor's office and what have you, where we could maybe go paperless as well. I don't know if y'all want to do that, but where uh, where we could coordinate with your office and that we'd be able to network. So whatever that consists of. That'd be nice. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we have to have we have to have our stuff for like like just what we went through the disasters. We have to have everything itemized, and that's what <coughs> Precinct Tracker basically does now. Yeah. But like I said, if it's going to be obsolete, it's going to be obsolete. So we're going to need to do something. And precinct tracker, something y'all bought how many years ago? Mm, about yeah. 18. 18. About and 18. I think the cost then was around how much? 30000 So here we are this many yeah, years later. This, this is 40. That's not really a bad deal. Is there an annual support fee or anything? It will be. I think right now each precinct is paying about 800 yeah, so a year. Yeah, year. And uh, Cross date. So that'd be what, 3200 And so. Um, I'm sure uh, once we sit down, get the committee together, and uh, and uh, <coughs> talk about what we need and get to where we're going, we can make that part of that process. But it, it would be tailored to road and bridge. Mm -hmm. Yes, so sir. that to our road and bridge, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. We were the guinea pig started off. Yeah. But you know, for instance, if I want to find out, if I get a complaint that says you haven't worked on my road in three months, well, all she has to do is put the information in and it tells exactly what date we worked on that road, what equipment we used, what materials we used, yes, stuff sir. like that. And that yes, is sir. a major benefit I yeah. for, for me. Will they pull that data into the new program? Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. Good deal. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we put it on the next agenda to uh, go out to advertise and we'll appoint a committee at the same time and just let everybody work on that together. Sounds and, good. And we'll make that. Uh, I'd like to ask this question of, of uh, Misty. If we're going to, you know, go out for some type of proposal, which it, the state is not required by the state, right. but if that would be your desire, then probably we don't need Chris to try to get these people down anymore or something, huh? Private negotiation? I think if, and this is just my opinion and maybe a lack of knowledge, but I think if we go out for competitive bids on this, <coughs> the competition realizes how unique this is because it's not just a regular software program. Yeah. They, I mean, Chris has already touched base with these guys and they understand what we have. Once the other competitors realize that, I don't think you'll have much competition. Yeah. Well, and it's six to nine months in development as well. So if we yeah. approved it, say December, you're still summertime. August, yeah. Or August, yeah. Well, the reason, the reason I bring that up is that, you know, if we go out for proposals, I guess you know this. This might be a proprietary deal. A it would be. It would be. Yeah, but there are some state regulations that that govern this, as we just found out going through the attorney on this uh, seal code. And uh, so you know, I think, and then county issues had an article about that influencing the bids and stuff by writing specs that only one. Now this to me has to be adapt or has to be adaptable to what we're using right now, like precinct tracker, because it's a specialty deal. And, uh, but I think there are some things that we need to consider, and I would uh, say that, you know, let's, 
make a decision whether we want it or not, which I think we do because of no doubt we're not going to be able to maintain what we have. But we need to be careful that we don't box ourselves in and go afoul of state law that we're trying to write specs that nobody else can bid by. Right. Yeah. They had a very good article, y'all read in County Magazine, this about proprietary single contractor yeah. stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good article. But I, I, I'm all for it. I think it's a, yeah. a good idea. Well, thank you. Appreciate the work Chris has done. Yes, sir. So is everybody in agreement? We'll put that on our next regular meeting agenda to move yeah. forward with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. I move with adjourn. Second. Second. Third. I have a motion by Commissioner <laughs> Cooper and a second by Commissioner Pell. So we're adjourned. <clears throat> thank you all for coming in today. Yes, sir. Let's see, when is our next report? November the 14th, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, are you ready so to that's going to be business? after Veterans yeah. Day. I want to remind yes. everybody where well, we're going to be. Sorry, late dedicated. Well,